Disabling internet cookies helps you keep companies from tracking your online behavior. Do you what know are what cookies? Cookies, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> cookies they are not to eat. Our kids are online, mobile, and technological. Technology is just a part of life for them. They use computers to do homework, socialize, stream video, and create movies and songs. And they can connect and communicate any time of the day. We want our kids to make good decisions so they can take advantage of the powerful technology that fills their lives. They need to judge the trustworthiness of what they find online. They need to know how to protect their privacy and how to avoid getting into trouble for copying the work of others without giving them credit. This is known as plagiarism. Parents can help teach their children the skills they need to use technology wisely and safely. Ask your teen if he can tell if statements about the internet are true facts or myths fiction. To begin, cut the fact and fiction words apart and put them on the table. Then cut out the fact and fiction cards. Deal one card at a time to him and have him read the statement. You're going to put all those statements that you think are facts underneath mm. this one and those that you think are fiction underneath this one, okay? Okay. All right, so. Downloading and sharing music and movies is not stealing. Okay, this is like plagiarism, isn't it? Could be. Why do you think it could, it, it's plagiarism? Because you're taking it from somebody. And who's that else? somebody? The anybody. Internet? Anybody. Okay, so it's a fact or it's a fiction? Fiction. <laughs> okay, all right. Others can pass on information that is supposed to be private. You understand? Yeah. Fact. Why? Because they can even though it is private, but they can. Okay, wait. Others can pass on information that is supposed to, to be, be private. private. Okay. Give me an example of, of how this could happen. Well, um, like on Facebook, their friend, a friend of yours, could give you information from someone and um, that isn't theirs and it could be a friend's friends but it was on somebody's account and they're taking private information from someone okay all right all right okay. this one posting things to bully humiliate or intimidate others doesn't hurt anyone could you read it again i couldn't understand posting things to bully humiliate or intimidate others doesn't hurt anyone do you understand what's the, what's the meaning of the word intimidate? Um, I've heard it before and I'm pretty sure it's to like scare someone. No, it's to make you feel... Uncomfortable. Uncomfortable and, and it's to low, lower your self-esteem, to make you feel like low. That's what I'm thinking it is. So, posting things to bully, humiliate, humiliate or, or intimidate, intimidate others, others doesn't hurt anyone. That it would be fiction. Why? Because it does hurt their feelings. Okay. It is okay to take and use anything you find online. Fiction. Why? Because it could be plagiarism and sometimes the information isn't always correct. Okay. All right. Next one. Online flirting with strangers or acquaintances is always risky. What is an acquaintance? Somebody you know, it's not really your friend. You met but them, you but you don't know who them, they are. You know their faces, you know, you know, that's acquaintances. Okay. And you know what it's is flirting? Flirting, like talking with someone mm, that, you, not ex that mm. um, you know. No, flirting is like, uh, you know, if you like somebody. I know that kind of flirting. Okay, that's <laughs> also online flirting with strangers, with somebody you don't, don't know, know. Or acquaintances, which are not really your friends, but somebody. Are all, is always risky. 
fact. Okay. Next one. Be aware of what you post. Information can be found and used against you later. Fact, because sometimes when you post something it, and it affects your future, it affects your whatever it's called, your reputation. Oh, sure. Your reputation. Okay, all right. And the last two. Mm -hmm. Flirting can quickly lead to inappropriate conversations or requests. Fiction. That doesn't always happen, but sometimes it does. But it's okay sometimes. It's not the worst. Together you can see how many answers are correct by checking the parent answer sheet. Now we're going to check how you did. Since that there are more facts than fictions. So cool. this is the fact statement sheet and this is the fiction statement. So let's start with the fictions. Okay. Flirting can quickly lead to inappropriate conversations or requests. Okay, so let's look here. Okay, flirting, so this is a fact. So you made a mistake there. Why uh -oh. do you think if there was a mistake? Flirting can quickly lead to an... Oh, it says flirting can. So that when I said it, it sh doesn't always, it already said that, so it should have been a fact. Okay, so it's a fact, not a fiction. You've seen it many times. Your child comes home from school with a report to write. Off to the internet. But as you probably know, not everything she finds on the web can be trusted. The internet is bursting with information. Some of it's correct, some of it's questionable, and some of it is just plain wrong. While some 6th and 7th graders may think about whether or not the information on the internet is accurate, Many tend to believe that everything they read on the web is true. Do the fact detective activity with your teen to learn how to examine a website for clues to its accuracy with a little detective work. Cut apart the fact detective cards. Draw one card from the stack. The idea is to give you some statements that may be true, may be false. You're using the internet to find the answer, and you need to find at least three separate sources. Because the first one you can't always trust, and the second one you may or may not trust. If you get concurrence on three of them, you've got a pretty good chance of having the right information. And there's some strange information out there. So here's the first one, the first clue. Great white sharks are more deadly than mosquitoes. Okay, and, and, that, and that's, that's the initial opinion. The idea is you kind of get an idea and then you go research it. Have her first guess if she thinks it's fact or fiction. Then search the internet for information together. When you find something, will you please tell me what answer you got and what site it was from? Using your favorite search engine, such as Google, Ask, Yahoo, or Bing, search for the information that will tell you if the statement on the card is true or false. Search more than one site to make sure of your answer. There are several questions to ask yourself or to find out because you need to know how good the information is. With each website you find, answer the questions on the Fact Detective clue sheet. Okay, do you know the author of the organization? Does yeah. it give you any information about who wrote the article? With each website you find, answer the following questions. Who wrote this? Check to make sure the author or organization is credible by looking at their title, expertise, and background. Tenwell Today is a blog about everything that interests me personally and I'm passionate about. That. From reliable sources all over the net. Okay, so this person was, you have to take this person's word that the sources were reliable, but at least you're getting a little bit of information. That way you could find, if you find the same information on another source, it could be true. Dot what? Look at the web address. If the web address ends in dot edu, then the material is from an educational institution, such as a college or university. 
If it ends in .gov, it's from a government agency, and both of them are good signs. Why don't you go back and then see what some of the other links might be, and we can go through the same process. Life science. Life science, is that a .com, a .edu? Um, dot .com. Okay. What is the source of the information? Does the information come from a well-known newspaper or organization? When was this updated? Has the site been updated lately? If not, move on. What was this linked to? Was the site linked from another web page you trust? That's not always a true signal of credibility, but it's probably a good sign. The activity mentions this CRAAP test, which can help people evaluate the information they find online. Let's, ten. Let's go to ten. Ten being the most. Yeah. Okay, mosquito. Asian program. Box jellyfish. Does it have a great white shirt? Wait. All right. We've looked at several sources. Correct. Uh, and some of those sources had information from other places. And they were probably in agreement. So is it true? that great white sharks are more deadly than mosquitoes? Or is it false? False. Mm. That would mean the mosquitoes are more deadly than great white sharks. Okay. Right. Then don't get bit. Share these additional suggestions with your team for becoming a better internet researcher. Compare multiple sources. Kids and teens should look at several sites to see if they give the same information. Remember the Rule of three, always compare three sources. If they're different, keep looking. This will help them determine whether a piece of information is accurate. Watch out for ads. Help your kids notice when advertisers are trying to target them and teach your kids to question what the ads are saying. If the ad looks too good to be true, it is probably not something they want to click on. Follow the school assignment guidelines. Teachers often specify what sites students should search for information, how many sources of information they should use, and how to list each source. That is how to write up a citation for the source. Many kids use Wikipedia as their only source for finding information, but remind them that they shouldn't use it as their only source, just a starting point. There is a lot of other good information they can find that isn't included in Wikipedia. Here are some common sense tips to talk about with your children concerning internet use. Being connected can be positive or negative. It's what people make it. Our kids have a choice in all their online relationships. They can say something positive or say something mean. Talk about online bullying. It's real. It's everywhere. Make sure your kids know how to deal with online bullying and if the situation gets serious, urge them to tell a trusted adult about it. Either you or another relative or a teacher. If you're concerned your child is being bullied, talk to the school's administrator or counselor. Encourage positive posting. Have they said something encouraging about something they've seen or read online? From an early age, kids need to know they can add positively to the online world. Remind kids the texts and instant messages may not persist, but they still have impact. Anything they say or do with their phones or through quick messages may seem to disappear when the device shuts down but the impact on others remains, whether for good or bad. If you and your child enjoy these activities, tell your child's teacher. The teacher may have more ideas to share for learning fun at home. If your child is having a hard time with these activities, you can also talk to your child's teacher. There may be another tip sheet or other activities to help.